How to capsulize in 10 minutes the essence of four hours of DC Waldorf taking you to the next level of flint napping. He starts with detailed discussion of tools, stone, antler, copper, and explains specific tool use throughout the video. You can get by with a minimum amount of tools and you can get by with a minimum amount of rock. What I'm going to do is just show you my tool kit. This, this is the Master Napper's tool kit. This is, this is everything including the kitchen sink. And then I can lay out the tools that you absolutely cannot get along without. I use this more to drive my punches than anything else. But this right here will take care of a rock, say maybe. Is that uh, moose antler? Yes, it is. Yeah, in fact, all of these are moose. Uh, the hardness of your antler billets has a lot to do with the type of flake that you're going to take off. And uh, that there works a little bit better on obsidian. This works a little bit better on hard flint. And of course, I have a matching set of, 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 of copper billets here for the guys that like to use those things. These are copper bobbers. I like to use the ones that have harder lead that has a higher tin content in it for my preforming work in harder flints. And when I get into the softer material, the material that's been heat treated, I like to use a billet that has, that has pure lead in it. It behaves more like antler. Another tool that I use for authentic work uh, is this antler handle that's been mounted with an antler prong. These two tools are used very different from one another and uh, the platform preparations are quite a bit different and the flake types are different between these in, two in as well. Respect. We started out uh, with the challenge of trying to get uh, the most number of points out of the smallest amount of stone and not leaving a lot of debitage. Now the most important thing to remember is that you can learn just as much from a small flake as you can from a great big chunk of rock. It just happens on a smaller scale, but you use the same uh, angles and the same strategies to get a point out of a little piece as you do a big one. DC starts with About the techniques the used to make lovely points from small flakes and then turns to the, to the strategies for drawing points out of gnarly hockey puck cobbles. I, I wouldn't try any of them, so uh, why don't you try that first hockey puck one? You like this one? Oh, right? yeah. I like this one, too. Oh, I'll get 80%. The in local Indians, they started with hammer stones, worked down until they began to get an edge, and then they went from there. They did their platform preparations and, uh, and everything off the edge, and then they switched over to the antler from the rock. In order to get a flake across here, I've got to do a really strange maneuver. I'm going to have to set up a platform for that. I'm going to have to swipe off in this direction to set the platform up to go in this direction. And uh, I'm going to work and take an outward stroke. Right, like that. And I took a little orange peel flake off right here to set up the platform where the billet will land right here to get this. There it goes. That gets there first. Yeah, beautiful material. Look at that. That little flake right there will make a bird point. That flake right there will make a bird point. It's pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful. Why throw it away? It's, it's relatively straight. It'll make a little bird point about that long. And look at that. It's got red and green and, and brown in it. Let me set that aside. Come on. There it goes. You didn't even see it go, but it went. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that material. Wow. There's another arrowhead right there. That's, that right there will make a point an inch long. Use the small stuff. It works the same. Yeah, you have the same problems with the little stuff as you have with the big stuff. Yeah. Work the little stuff, and then you can translate that with just bigger tools and more force to a larger piece. But the angles remain the same. The strategy remains the same. Yeah. And I'm striking straight down. Not inwards, but straight down. And I still hinge just a little bit. I strike it straight down because I, I, if I struck too straight in, see, now that flake right there went perfectly. And this one right here, I struck just a, just a, a half a degree too straight in. Yeah. And I clipped this one just right. We've got that flattened off, but we've got this bad, bad, I mean, this is, this is a terrible thing. That's why I asked you to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I see you make a nice little handle core and you make a bunch of little tiny bladelets off of that, but we're not going to do that. We're after a biface, not a core. This is where, this is where the average guy 
it's just going to die on the vine. And just throw it. This on, is this throws is throws it on the debit. This is this 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 is where this is relegated to the I don't know what to do with it heap. Well, that's why we're asking. You. It's it, it's rel. It's, so what are you, what you're about to see is going to be some pretty weird stuff. And uh, because what we're going to use, we're going to, we're going to get out of this using indirect percussion. Okay, the and technique there, for for direct percussion would be what? Just describe it. I'm looking at it. And well, right, it would be to keep striking and wigwag all the way around, upstairs, okay. downstairs, yeah, and or to to just go ahead and keep hitting here until you got all of this worked off, and then you could remove what little square edge you had left, but you'd end up with a point about that long if you did. Okay. We're fighting for one almost as long as the rock is. We're going to put a pencil line right there, and we're going to put a pencil line right there. That's how long that rock is. When we get our point done, we'll lay the point back down there again. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to punch in an edge that I can get a hold of. Okay. What's going on here? Yeah, that's going to get it. Okay. There it goes. Oh, that, wow. That opened her up. Boy, did it ever. But look how much edge we lost. Nothing. Correct. Plus, you got a nice piece for another point out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. There it goes. Again, that's I hit that. Now, that was high velocity. And a, and a high angle. It's high velocity at high angle. There we go. Wow. See, we're getting her all the way across, and yep. it's doing what it's supposed to do. Everything's going to come on these angles right here till I get down to about here. Okay. Or at least most of it will, anyway. Now we go back. There's our platform. We go back to copper bopper. Medium. Hit it right there. Go back the other way. We're, we're, we're working square edge technology now. You can see that edge is square. Yes, I see that. Yeah. yeah I want to come straight down on that booger, man. I got to. Just straight down on it. Oops. I missed it, but I still got what I wanted to get, and there's still another lick right. See, I missed it. I hit way clear over here, but because there was an incurvature, I caught it. Still got the material I wanted to get. Um, I see the spot I want to hit. There it goes. Okay, now one more. So you you use the punch to create a, a little yeah a divot that that oh, makes the platform it, yeah. even on a square edge. If you've got an incurvature, you change the platform angle to seventy degrees. You can catch it. Yeah, it makes it like a little uh, spur right. platform. Right there. So See, there it is. Real closely so we can get a good picture right. of that. See, there it is, right there. Yeah. There's an incurvature that's 70 degrees going that way, and that gives you your shot back this way with either copper or antler, which right. I'll use the copper instead because it's a tight spot. Come on. There it goes. Wow. Now, if you'll notice, we've removed a lot of mass. We're still at our pencil lines. And half the mass is gone off of that hump. Wow. Be copper. longer than longer than the copper, okay. just by a little bit. There it goes. See, it went clear down in there. Yeah. Then I'm going to hook onto it right here if I can. May not be able to get it. There we go. There's a spot to hit it. Now the tip of this antler is uh, blunt. Is blunt. Right. So it sort of mm -hmm. catches on the rough surface mm -hmm. of the tip. Mm -hmm. It may or may not go because I've got don't have enough mass. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have, a, it keeps moving aside, so I don't have enough mass. Now, if this weighed, if this was a square section axe, that, that flake would have been gone. So I'm going to have to use the copper because I got a, a sharper wrap with the copper. And it'll stick and it'll go. There it goes. And in reality, I can actually just keep right on going with this punch and bifacially flake using quadraface techniques. I said, when we started, I said about a quarter of an inch is what we were going to lose. Yep. And if I was to lay, there's, there's your quarter inch right there. For the rest of the four hours, in which DC will shorten your learning curve by a couple of years, he details strategies for worst case scenarios on large pieces of obsidian and flint. To delve into the full experience,
go to moundbuilderbooks.com or napperscorner.com.